The second objective is to align the regional efforts with the national climate actions. So we're aiming to integrate this within uh, all the technical interventions and also the peer forums. And finally, uh, we're also sharing lessons learned and the best practices from this project with the wider under the coalition. Um, so this is in the form of knowledge products or peer forum, forums like the one where we're here today. In the next slide, uh, you can see some contact details for my colleague Fariel, who will be saying some closing words today. Uh, she's the project manager for this project, and she'd be very happy to answer any questions you might have. Um, we've got an amazing panel today, um, and I'll uh, hand over to Julianne to begin the discussions. Great. Thank you very much, Anissa. Um, and yeah, just from my side as well, um, a big warm welcome. And as Anaisa said, we've had this peer, these peer forums on very different topics. And today, uh, with this last one, we're actually um, yeah, doing a bit of a collaboration between two projects uh, from the Under Two Coalition that they're working with. And we really wanted to use this project. We've designed it uh, to think about participants and help participants understand what might be some of the benefits of using satellite data for driving ambitious climate actions and also how to track progress. Um, so we hope that this is uh, an opportunity for you to hear about the approach of the STARS project, which is um, one of the projects um, as with, for, by the Under2 coalition, working together with Climate Trace and other partners um, uh, and different project countries. We're also uh, hoping that they can share that project experience can share a little bit about how um, the work with satellite data goes and also how it's linked to strengthening climate action. Um, we're also bringing in the experience from Pernambuco, a uh, state in Brazil, um, who's part of the STARS project, one of the project states there, um, but who's also a project state or a former project state of the Climate Footprint Project. So um, we're hoping to hear from them how they have been working with data um, to drive ambitious climate actions, since, as particularly since they developed their first GHG inventory. Uh, we're hoping that this is also an opportunity for you to um, understand and gain insights around some of the benefits of using satellite data, what it means for inventory reporting and for tracking, but also for the design or implementation of climate actions. Um, and uh, yeah, what, what needs to be in place at a country level to really make that work as well. And hopefully we'll start to think into what might be some of the steps as well um, for using satellite data to un unlock climate actions. So together we've got about 90 minutes today um, as part of this peer forum and uh, you'll hear from a, a few different people. Um, so myself, I'm Julianne uh, from Edge Effects, as Anaisa mentioned, you've already heard from Anaisa as part of the climate group and she already said that we have um, two very exciting people who are speaking to us today. Um, so I'm really glad that we have Samantha de la Vela with us, uh, who's the Sustainability and Climate Superintendent um, of the Pernambuco Environment and Sustainability Secretariat. And we also have Gabriela Volpato with us, who's the Product Manager at Climate Trace, one of the partners um, of the STARS project. In terms of how we're proposing to spend our time together, um, we're now in the phase where we've got a bit of a welcome and a check-in. Uh, I will turn to you in a minute to hear um, a bit who's in the room. Uh, we then are going to hear from Gabriela a little bit more about the STARS project and how, what satellite data, what that means, um, what it looks like, um, what some of the benefits might be. And then we will, um, Samantha and I will have a bit of a conversation around uh, Pernambuco's experience and what their journey has been since they started uh, their first inventory and in working with the Climate Footprint Project in the, phase, in the first phase. We then have a little bit of time, and it's going to be a short one, but we'll have a little bit of time for you to spend in breakout rooms to really generate some questions. We've got Samantha and Gabriela here with their experience, so we want to make the most of it. Um, and we'll ask you to see what are some of the questions that you still have around satellite data and working with satellite data. 
uh, and we'll bring those questions from the breakout rooms back into plenary to have a round of Q&A and hear some of the responses to your questions. Um, we're then hoping to have uh, a bit of a checkout and um, we'll send around a survey to have also get some peak feedback from you. And that's, uh, you will be surprised how fast 90 minutes will go. <laughs> um, so that's then, that would be the end of the peer forum. Okay, with that, I think I've done a lot of talking um, and I, I'm really excited to actually know who's in the room. So I would love to hear um, if you can open up the chat, it's the little, you'll have a little button and introduce yourself with your name, uh, where you're calling from, either the country or the region or the state, and what you're hoping to work about, uh, what you are hoping to learn about working with satellite data. Um, so please feel free to give us an introduction. This is the time when everybody goes really quiet because they're all typing. <laughs> ah, fantastic. Great. So we've got Emanuela back from the Welsh government, really wanting to hear more around data and what level of detail you can get into and how it can help towards monitoring of policy and implementation progress. Um, Welcome, welcome back, Emanuela. I think we've had you also as part of the first peer forum phase. Uh, we've also got uh, Lise from the Western Cape in South Africa. Um, also, yeah, one of the pilot um, uh, regions of the of the STARS project. So interesting to hear maybe how that compares with some of the experiences of Pernambuco. Um, Hola, Florencia. <laughs> Very nice to have you from Jujuy, from Argentina. Um, and yeah, very interesting to hear about uh, a bit more about the different uh, the different maps. And now my Spanish has left me with the riesgo. I think challenges. Um, we also have uh, Mark uh, from Gauteng. Welcome back uh, from South Africa, our colleagues. Um, Matthews from Gauteng as well, and some colleagues from uh, Brazil. Um, fantastic. Hi, Dipanjana, also from West Bengal, and thanks for joining us so late in the day. Um, Dipanjana was saying that she's really excited about um, expecting more to, to learn more about information about GHG emissions and maybe even about loss and damage. Um, interesting to link that to that topic as well. Um, and we have uh, Mathieu from Ricardo. Um, and Mathieu says that he's seeing uh, how satellite data is being used um, outside of academia and how it can help climate policies. Um, fantastic. So I can see that you're still having coming with the introductions. P please feel free to keep them coming. Um, I'm hoping that we can address some of those questions um, and, and uh, some of the things that you're trying to find out. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited that we've got such a diverse room in uh, here with us. Now, with that, I think we'll start to come over and actually get into the meat of the conversation. Um, and with that, I would like to introduce our first speaker, Gabriela. Um, Gabriela Volpato, she's a product manager um, at What Time, and What Time uh, manages a coalition data produced for Climate Trace. And Climate Trace, uh, Gabriela works really closely with the diff with the Climate Trace coalition members to deliver actionable data and to make global carbon emissions available to the public. Um, she's got a lot of experience around working with carbon emissions modeling, but also identifying opportunity for improvements. And I think her work is uh, based on a really strong belief that freely available carbon emissions data is really is the key to advancing emissions reduction worldwide. Um, she holds an, uh, a Master's of Science in Energy Systems Management from the University of San Francisco and a Bachelor's of Science in Energy Engineering from the University of Brasilia in Brazil. With that, uh, Gabriela, I'm going to hand over to you um, 
to share a little bit about your experience and um, tell us a bit more about um, the work that you're doing. Thank you very much, Julianne. First, I would like to thank the organizers, the Climate Footprint Forum, and thank you for inviting me to give me this space to share with you a little bit more about the work that we are doing at Climate Trace. And also, I want to share with you the work that we have been doing with the state of Pernambuco. Next slide, please. Okay, so in climate treatment, the most I, we have the objective of uh, providing information that is independent. The data is obtained through direct observation of the activities that are causing erosion, for example, and this data can become the baseline. The data is observed via satellite. The climate tree are data that are available easily. The data doesn't take long to reach or to get, and we have information on the inventories. And our platform have more data from other countries. Since 2015 to 2014, we have more countries. And in following, we will have coming soon the 2021 emissions uh, at world level. We also have the objective of for providing data that is wide encompassing so we can identify those sectors that causes the most uh, emissions. So as I said, uh, soon we will send the data on the emission sources worldwide so we will know who are the ones that are causing these emissions next slide please well climate trace uh, can only encompass all these sectors because we are a coalition of organizations we have uh, non-profit foundations and uh, startups and also environmental leaders in at Climate Trace, we are receiving collaborations from dozens of organizations and companies that are key to providing us with data. We also collaborate with companies that provide satellite imaging data and other sources of data and other information on emission sources that will help us create models that can allow us to estimate the GHG emissions. At Climate Trace, we want to collect all the technical resources available, whether collective or not, so that we can provide the system with more transparency and have a better capacity to, uh, to allow people to take action. We don't want to stay in one sector, but to work with all specialists in different sectors related to GHG. For example, we work with people in the mining sector, with companies that are focused in the communications or uh, forest cover, and also in transportation. We are so working together with many experts so that we can have a worldwide inventory. Next slide, please. Here, we are showing you a pie that shows which are the sectors that we are tracking at the le world, uh, country level. In the state of Pernambuco, we are providing data, preliminary data on the sectors. Please, next slide. As I said, in the state of Pernambuco, we obtain preliminary data on um, uh, emissions in the sector of electricity, iron steels, aviation, road transportation, cement, 
also oil and gas, and also we are providing preliminary data on emissions and the use of fertilizers in agricultural soils. So we are going to provide information now in forestry. This is coming soon. We have several states that are interested in tracking that. And also, we are developing for um, cattle raising information. Livestock and landfills are under development. These are the two sectors that are the hardest to observe through satellite imaging, but we are developing our own model to track that. So here you have an image that can that you can see the scope where we are working. We have identified some cities and we also have identified road and the road network. And you can see that there is an orange area. And these are the cities that we are focusing on so that we can understand better how they are emitting uh, GHG in the state of Pernambuco. Next slide, please. Well, so in order for us to provide the states and people with that information, we need to first tell people how we collect that data on GHG. So we are collecting the data on GHG emissions from the state of Pernambuco through satellite imaging and also auxiliary documents. So we are trying to observe how are the activities developing, especially these activities that generate GHG. So we are observing where, for example, we had forest fires, which is the size of a mining site. Uh, and we use that data as a proxy to modulate the uh, inventory of GHG. And uh, we use those model using those uh, in on-site GHG emission data. So for example, we have kilns and uh, why we can know how much the kilns are uh, emitting GHG. So it also helps us to nurture or feed on the, the model. So we are using in, uh, machine learning and artificial intelligence to learn uh, how much other sectors are producing GHG. And we are using complementary data, uh, as I said before, because companies are providing information about that. So with that additional data, we can estimate the GHG emissions in a particular sector. So we can compare the numbers or figures uh, that we had in previous years and now. This approach is very, oh, it's an overall approach. And um, it's better, and this approach is better explained by focusing on two sectors. Next, uh, next slide, please. Here, for example, is one example of a power plant. In this ima image here, a director, we can see the fumes, and so the satellite image identify by using algorithm how this uh, power plant is operating, if if the power plant is on or off. So we are collecting the data from the power plant, and we did some scrapers, and we, well, not hack the hack, we were able to obtain the data from the power plant, and we are relating that data with the satellite images. And now we know if they're operating or no, and we have developed the models using those data. And now we can discover if that power plant is working, and also we can apply factors, uh, emission factors, and therefore we can estimate the amount of GHG gases that are being emitted by that power plant. So we 
analyze the data coming from the power plant and then compare that against what we can observe in other similar power plants in the region and also for the electric electricity sector. The next slide, please. Here you can see another example. This is a steel plant. First, we try to identify the activity that is causing the GHG gap, uh, emission. And in this image here, we have a satellite image. In the yellow dots, we can assess the, uh, the heat that is being emitted by this steel plant. And by measuring those red dots, we can know how much gas they are emitting. And we have auxiliary data and we're training our models to be able to assess as well other steel plants. And by making a comparison, we can learn how much other steel plants are producing. And we can estimate now the GHG being emitted by uh, that steel plant and others. So we are following the same line of thought. We are using the heat data to know how much activity is happening at a given plant. Next slide, please. Here, as I was saying, when I was talking with the state of Pernambuco, we have two sectors that are in, under development and we are obtaining satellite data. And we are starting to work with uh, the areas that have uh, organic material deposits. We are talking about landfills and feedlots and we're using satellite data image to identify where are these activities happening. That is our first step. We have to know where these activities are taking place so that we can learn which are the activities that are happening that are creating GHG emissions. And that will allow us to do an overall mapping to identify the folk, the, the, those areas that have activities on cattle racing and similar that create GHG emissions. Next slide, please. And so we have a general roadmap of climate trace. Last year, our focus was to provide information on GHGs from different sectors at country level. For this year, we are planning to, and we're focusing on working more with the states. We want to work with the states, providing them and receiving auxiliary data or additional data. In the case of the state of Pernambuco, the data that they provided us allowed us to calibrate the, the modeling. And also in this year, we are focusing on uh, the top GHG emitters in every sector. And soon we will be able to provide a top 500 list on who are the top emitters. And we are working in the STARS project with the provinces or states that were selected. For next year, we are focusing on working with other states. We are going to keep on working with what we have been doing. We want to roll out what we've done in Pernambuco to other states and, and analyze all major emitting sources globally. For the future, thinking about, for example, 2024, we want to increase the number of reporting that we do. We want to make them more readily available. We want to increase the, to make the data available um, in a more uh, easy way, make them available weekly or monthly. Next slide, please. 
Eu vi também aqui nos comentários que I read in the comments that were presented that people are interested on how can this data be used. And I'm so happy because we have a slide that explains how you can use that data. So Climate Trace is um, working on the, the objective of providing overall data on GHG emissions. And we want to compare the inventories that we have against those that are handled by other states or countries. And we will improve our methodology by doing so and have a better traceability when we compare our data against the data provided by other states or countries. And um, we will be able to validate our inventory and our results. Another thing that we noted is that there are data we can provide data from sectors or countries that can have not be, been available for everyone. And another use is to evaluate the impact of public policies and events on GHG emissions in a given sector so that we can assess if there was an improvement in with regards to the emissions of GHG. Also, there is another use, and that is to estimate a scope three emissions. In that case, we are using not only the activities, but also facility level emissions of upstream industries. And also there is a possibility of reducing uh, GHG in a given uh, site, for example, and identify emission uh, reduction opportunities. Next slide, please. And once again, I thank you a lot for giving me the time and space to talk about Climate Trace. If you have any questions, I'm here. I'm available for you. Great. Thank you very much, Gabriela, for um, I think it was a, a brief introduction into, you know, working with satellite data um, because, I, you know, it's not always that much time, but I think um, it was a starting point and I think you've already definitely whetted people's appetite because I can see some questions already coming in the chat. Um, so please hold those questions, take them with you uh, and collect more questions because we will come back to Gabriela uh, and also to Samantha a little bit later um, uh, to hear from them and to uh, respond to those questions. And we will be sharing the presentation as well. Uh, so everybody can breathe, you can breathe out and, uh, and yeah, uh, just enjoy. Great. Now I'm going to turn to um, our second speaker uh, for today. We've got Samantha de la Vela with us uh, and she is the Sustainability and Climate Superintendent at the Pernambuco Environment and Sustainability Secretariat. And uh, Samantha is a biologist by training with a master's degree in animal biology, and she's worked in biodiversity conservation and in the management of conservation units at the Pernambuco State Environment Agency. Uh, however, since 2019, uh, she's worked as superintendent of sustainability and climate at the state's environment department. Uh, she is also the secretary for the work uh, of the Technical Chamber of Climate of the ABMA, which is the Brazilian Association of the State Environmental Entities. So, and Samantha and I, we know each other already for a few, I think we've said almost two years now. So I'm really happy that we can have a conversation again. And Samantha, so that we can talk to each other, I'm going to turn off my screen and we can hopefully just see each other's faces. Um, but Samantha, I wanted to um, come to you and ask you, uh, you know, you've, um, we've been, you've been part of the, uh, the, the state of Pernambuco was already part of the climate footprint project in the first phase. And I remember that when we first spoke, it was a very impressive journey that Pernambuco had to share about developing uh, a GHG inventory in just about six months. 
And I was wondering uh, what's been the journey uh, of Pernambuco around emissions tracking and driving ambitious climate actions since then. Uh, what have you done since your since you've been part uh, of the Climate Footprint Project? And what were some of the yeah developments or decisions maybe that you that you've taken since then? Muito obrigada, Julie. Thank you very much, Julian. I want to thank once again you for giving me the opportunity of being part of this peer forum and be able to share information with you, information that is important for you to learn more about Pernambuco. Pernambuco in the recent years. Now I'm going to tell you more about the story of Pernambuco. We have a environmental law since 2010 and but only until 2019 we were able to build our first inventory thanks to the climate change uh, footprint and the work that we did coincided with the reactivation of the climate form footprint project it's was a very interesting experience because you helped us build our own inventory. And by doing so, we imp improve the learning and the uh, ability of getting information. So we delivered the inventory in 2019. And in 2021, we started to update the inventory. So the first inventory was covered in 2015 until 2018 and the second inventory is increasing two years so we now have 2019 and 2020 in the second round we are doing an effort to have disaggregated data per, mun per municipality and that information is very important to develop climate policies and we have GHE emission data, and we are raising awareness among people, and now we are developing a plan. And for that plan, we had the support of the European Union and the German assistance agency so that we can have an integrated modeling system. We have defined uh, short, long and midterm goals for all the sectors so that the sectors can meet by 2015, so 2050, the carbon goals. This covers energy, land use, transportation, agriculture, residues and waste. And we have now this industries linked to a goal. And after doing all that work today, our greatest challenge is to build a governance model and a monitoring system that allow us to follow, to track the emissions and follow up on the actions to reduce uh, the carbon emissions. The uh, emission data in the inventories are very important for that stage of monitoring and implementing the decarbonization plan of the state. Fantastic. Thank you, Samantha. It sounds like you have been very busy uh, since I last spoke to you. Um, and there's a lot that's happened. And interesting also, of course, you say that, you know, uh, it's about also tracking or using the data to track what progress has been made against some of those plans. Um, and, you know, you've you've mentioned before that, you know, you already hinted towards it, that data is always aggregating data and gathering data, you know, is always a, a, a big question um, or also a challenge. And I was wondering if you could tell me a little bit more from your perspective, how, yeah, what your main challenges has been around gathering data, but also working with these different stakeholders at a sectoral level, given that that's where you're now also moving into with your plans. Yes. To collect information is one of the greatest challenges when you are doing inventories. In many opportunities, the information takes long to reach your hands and you have 
disaggregated data coming from different bodies within the government or in other levels of government, as well as the information that you receive from the sec uh, private sectors. You ha it's all uh, scattered. So another challenge is making all stakeholders be part of this project so that we can have a document that have information that can support actions and po policies. To make progress in these two fronts, I think that we need to take actions. And when I say take actions, I am saying, first, you have to have an agenda that has in mind the priority priority policies of the secretary. In the technical sphere, that policy help us to move the stakeholders, collect data and articulate the different sectors. And another success that we had in, to face or tackle the challenges is the forum, because it's a space for us to discuss and for all the sectors to meet. And the forum did help us and it's still helping us to build that. We created a task force for the inventory and it helped us to collect and interpret the data. In every phase that we completed, we brought that information to the forum so that we could have a open discussion with all the sectors so that can, they can all give us their input. So that was an important step. And in overall, all of the steps taken allowed us to build a very good inventory in a short time by sharing information that is also shared with all the stakeholders. Thank you very much. It sounds like a very collaborative process, but probably also one that, you know, takes the time to build these relationships and the trust between the different stakeholders, especially when you're starting to work around data, as you said, and interpreting it, understanding it, sharing it. So uh, it's interesting to hear that. And I know that I remember you already spoke about that in the first in the Climate Footprint Project. So this is now a few years ago. So it is an ongoing process, I can imagine. Um, now, you know, we've, we've, you are also, you've, um, the state of Pernambuco is also part of the STARS project now, one of the, the project states. And um, we've heard also from Gabriela that uh, there is data that was generated, um, satellite data for Pernambuco. And I was wondering, what have you as a state learned about satellite uh, data and working with it? Some of the benefits maybe, or kind of requirements, um, and, you know, with the satellite data that's that's come from this project, how how has it been compared to this, the data that you had from the inventory and how have you used it maybe in the policy? I think that's a question that many of the you know participants here today had in their introductions. Sorry, that's a lot of questions. <laughs> I always ask a lot of questions. <laughs> Thank you, Juliana. Well, the preliminary data that is being built by the project comes from learning experiences. The first thing that I want to underscore is the cement industry. The information provided by the state tells us the estimates and an inventory uses the traditional methodology. We understand that our data um, is our data is quite fragile because we are using a technical federal uh, record, and when we use the data, we observe that there are inconsistencies because you have years that you have information and others that you don't. There is a company that provide information in a certain inform in a certain area and there is another missing information so we have um re re certain information that are not compatible with the activity of the given sector so we are using data that is good and we are now using another way to measure emissions 
so we are now comparing databases to improve and have more sound data and precise data. A project that we are doing is also uh, covering the GHG emission with uh, fertilizers. Our inventories weren't covering that. We didn't have sources of the sale or use of fertilizers in Pernambuco. So in order to collect data, we needed to have a data source that was reliable. And I think that the, the project is allowing us to collect a, a, a very valuable information from different sources. Another information that I wanted to share with you comes from the transport sector. In that sector, the transportation is providing us with uh, emissions that are lesser than the traditional sectors. And it allows us to understand what's going on because in the transport sector, the explanation that we have in so far is that in the traditional methodology, you are using the data based on the cell of fuel, but that cell of fuel does not mean that it is a gas that is being emitted because you need to use that within the state. So we need to understand if the, or know if the vehicle is being used in the state or not. So um, the methodology of the carbon trace allow us to see what is being um, produced within the limits or boundaries of our state. And that data is associated to the sale of fuel, but it it allows us to mesh. It has allowed us to measure what's going on in the state. Another important matter is the effort that we are making to obtain disaggregated data at the municipal level. This is important because it allows us to strengthen pol lo uh, local policies but also take local actions to know, for example, which are the places where we have to make an effort, how, where we have to issue a policy. So in summary, it provides us with information that allows us to address the lack of information, information that is not reliable. Gabriela told that we can use that information in a different time frame, And there are so many other reasons for us to think about how this methodology can be useful to monitor and also um, use that information to feed public policies. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Samantha. And I think the, the word that still is very, that I still have very strongly in my head is the word reliability, um, which I think was interesting to hear your reflections on that. And again, similar like with Gabriela, we only managed to, of course, scrape the surface, uh, you know, around the experience of Pernambuco. I'm sure we could have a, a you know, a, a lot longer conversation about this. Um, but I also, and I'm hoping that this has again triggered maybe a few questions for participants that we can then dive deeper into. So thank you so much, uh, Samantha, for for coming back here and and sharing that experience. And I'm looking forward to uh, welcoming you back with Gabriela for the Q and A in a minute as well. Um, I'm going to share my screen again so we can have a. I hope you can see this because I wanted uh, to invite all of you participants to take just a, a minute in silence, just to reflect, having listened to Gabriela and also to Samantha, what are some questions that are still coming up for you around satellite data? Um, feel free, you can either put them on a, on a piece of paper or just, yeah, think about it in your head. Um, I know some of you have already captured some questions in the chat, uh, but we'll go into a conversation in a minute. So just start to check in with yourself. What questions are coming up for you around satellite data? And as you kind of hold these questions and your thoughts maybe, and take them into your, uh, your breakout rooms. So I wanted to, we wanted to take about 15 minutes um, in breakout rooms now. Uh, and this is a space where you can come off mute, you can talk to each other, 
and really start to generate some questions. Uh, we want to bring questions back to Samantha and to Gabriela. Um, and so um, we're, we've uh, set up little breakout rooms according to languages. So you can have one, there are some in Spanish, uh, in Portuguese and in English. And with fellow participants, it's a space where you can introduce yourself and then think about what are some of the questions that are coming up for you around set about satellite data? And what would you like to hear more about or have clarified or ask Samantha and Gabriela? Um, you'll have 15 minutes for that. There will be a um, facilitator from the climate uh, group from the under two coalition with you in the room. They are there to help you capture some of those questions. And I'm inviting you to bring one question. I know I'm asking you to write a lot of questions, but please only bring one question back to the plenary so that we can hear those questions and dive a bit deeper into that. Okay, now with all of that, I'm going to stop sharing my screen and just check um, with my colleague TJ if we're good to go into our breakout rooms. Thanks, Julianne. Yeah, I think we're all set. Just give me two minutes. Well, two seconds, not two minutes. Fantastic. Thank, Thank you. you. To um, feel free to feel free to use interpretation again. So you can choose a channel again uh, to start the interpretation and to be back with us. Great. I hope that was useful and interesting. Thank you interpreters for being on the ball with this. Um, now we have a little bit of time still to hear back from the different rooms, what some of the questions were that were coming up. I know I was in a room and there were a lot of questions. Um, I gave you the difficult task to come back with only one question per room. And um, I was wondering if maybe um, I can start with um, uh, one of our Spanish speaking rooms. Um, uh, Juliana, I think you were with one of the uh, groups. Did you have one question in your in your room that you came that you think is the biggest one that you want to bring back for Samantha and Gabriela? Sí, claro que sí. Ahí yes, pueden... of course. Can you hear me now? Can I, should I speak Spanish? Should I speak English? Is everything okay? Okay, so I'm going to speak Spanish, right? So one of our states asked, that was Cundinamarca, what I'm talking about, in Colombia. So they asked directly, a question directly to you, if the satellite images are classified per sector and at which scale? because they are interested in learning, for instance, understanding if these exercises could also happen or be done or developed at a municipal level. Well, that's a great question regarding the scale or scope. Well, we are assessing a per sector. We want to know which is going to be the best image to identify which is the activity that is causing the GHG emission. For example, in the production of rice, we use satellite imaging at the scale of 10 meters. That is, so every pixel is equal to 10 meters in the real scale. In the case of forest cover, we are working one kilometers, one square kilometer. So every pixel represents one kilometer square. The image is going to change depending on the best applicability of the images according to the sector that we are researching, the sector that we want to measure. So the that change is going to depend on the sector we're in, in researching. Great, thank you. And I like it that you've gone straight uh, uh, that you went straight with the question. I think that's, um, and I heard that there were similar ones maybe um, in other rooms that probably came up around the scale as well. Um, I was wondering if maybe I can go to another room uh, and 
hear from one of our, I know we have a lot of um, uh, participants from Brazil and Portuguese speaking ones. Um, maybe I can go to Rolf to your room and just hear from you what, what, was, what was one of the big questions um, that came up for you for, in, in your room. Or is that for me? I, I got lost in the in the different languages. Uh, ah, and I said, "Is uh, did you join that room? Okay, that's fine. Uh, I, it was the breakout room that um, Rolf was in. Oh uh, no, that that is him. Sorry, I just didn't okay. hear the name. I'm sorry. Okay, don't worry. Obrigado, <laughs> uh, Thank you, Julian. We were lucky because we had two colleagues from. That is Samantha from Pernambuco in our room. So it was interesting for us because we got more details. <laughs> Specifically, she explained per sector how a project can contribute data and how they were using methodologies that were adapted to analyze the GHG emissions. So, and there's this the per this perspective from the state of Brazil and how readily available the information is there, how to get that information as fast, especially for those states that are exporting commodities. That is the case of Rio Grande do Sul and Mato Grosso states. And one question uh, for Gabriela is, can you tell us which are the traceability requirements for increasing the export in a reliable form? How can the project contribute to that? Have you made progress in that or do you need to make it better in some way? Well, I have been trying to make some notes on your question, so, okay. Let me see if I got your question right. You are saying that you want me to tell how we are contributing to the supply chain in the scope three of emissions and how can we maintain um, ex reliable exports? Well, we are trying to measure emissions that are arising in a certain place. So we are in scope one. Nevertheless, because we are using data of emission, but also activities that are emitting, that information can help to scope three on emissions. So anyone buying a product will know where that product was produced and how much emissions came from that product. It will allow us to improve our scope three. We will be able to know where that product was produced and how this product is being uh, sent, the, the, the logistic, not only transportation, but also uh, the shipping. We will be able to trace and, and know the GHG emission amount for that given product. And that is also at a global scale. And by having the global scale, scale we'll be able to apply this as well in other states and regions. So this is a methodology that is applicable to all regions as well. Okay, thank you, Gabriela. And uh, it sounds like, um, Rolf, your group was uh, very lucky to have had the expert, uh, Samantha, in the room and that you could actually get a bit of a Q&A um, going straight away, which is nice to hear. Um, I was wondering if maybe one of the other rooms had a question that was um, uh, that was for Samantha as well. Um, I'm wondering if... Um, uh, in the room where Emanuela and Mark uh, were. I think you were one of the English speaking rooms. Um, I know that when I left the room, there was a question for uh, for Samantha that was coming up and I was wondering if you maybe wanted to share that, Emanuela. 
Yes, sure. Hi, everyone. And then hi, Samantha, as well. Nice to see you again. And the question was, um, since we had a climate group uh, supported um, forum between Pernambuco and Wales some months ago, and we discussed about the monitoring uh, system for a, for a country and how to monitor the implementation of the policies and the progress for them. And I had a question for Samantha uh, on when she described um, how she takes on all the learnings from the seminars and um, just to you know turn them into action. I just wanted to ask her what were the main um, the main steps uh, that this process has implied, you know, in in taking, and what are they like? How do these learnings from the seminars turn into action or you know slash communication with the stakeholders? Uh, in terms of maybe developing new data collection that you found that would be really useful, that would be really useful for your state as well to have your greenhouse gas inventory, um, and what would be the challenges in this process? Great, thank you, Emanuela. And Samantha, I'll, I'll hand that question over to you. Uh, agradeço, Emanuela. Thank you, Manuela. Well, we are still trying to discover how can we uh, develop plans and goals and turn them into concrete actions and how to create indicators that can truly help us monitor those uh, emissions and actions. So this is our time. This is the discussion that we are having today. How can we make that visible? How can we make that materialize? The modeling has um, been thought about goals and we have defined certain active, but they are kind of temporary. So this is a scientific process in the modeling. After the modeling, we worked a lot in analyzing the barriers to implementation of actions. And we also propose actions to overcome the barriers. So every goal has an indicator and an action, set of actions. So we know that we still need to develop an, an indicator for a sector action and to link that action to the inventory indicators. And so to, up to now we have defined three levels of action this monitoring system that we have started to design is still very complex to what well, it allows us to monitor on a daily basis what are the government actions and uh, also monitor emissions sometimes we don't have a way of identifying how this action is reducing or abating emissions immediately or sometimes we cannot link that to a program. So it's a very hard. We have very good examples uh, from the UK and other countries. We know that they are able to link emission reduction to a given action, but it's very complex to be able to say this action will curb down emissions. Right. Thank you, Samantha. And really interesting to hear also that this conversation between Wales and Pernambuco has been ongoing um, and still continues. Um, I think we probably have time for, for one more question. And so I was wondering, MC, uh, you were in one of the rooms and, and you just let me know that you had one question. Please, mm -hmm. what, what was the big question in your room? Thanks, Julianne. Um, yeah, one of our questions was actually already answered, which was great. It was about the replicability of the methodology, which I know that Gabriella touched on. Um, but we did have another question, um, which was, um, this was from a participant um, in Gauteng, the state of Gauteng in South Africa. Uh, they would like to know um, who the satellite data belongs to um, and whether or not it um, is restricted um, for what it is used for. Um, so, yeah, for instance, the follow up question was, you know, if it's from a private company, um, can they therefore like prevent the information um, from being used? Um, 
great question. And I'm so happy that we have Leka here. She works on that. Uh, yes, so we will address that question. And the question is uh, who, to whom they belong? Well, the owner depends on the satellite that we are using. There are several models where we use satellite imaging that are totally available by the governments make them available through their government bodies. And so you just have to download that satellite image and you can develop your own models from them. There are certain situations where you cannot use or have available those images. But we can make available certain results that came from the satellite images. That is to say that the results of the GHE emission. So sometimes we bought or received funds to help us buy satellite images uh, that are primed. And when we have that kind of cases, we just cannot make that input available to everyone. But we can provide the results. The results come from those data that we used, that it was uh, data that was, let's say, uh, private. Oh, I was forgetting about the last part of a question. To whom those uh, GHE data belongs and the results? Because we are producing information. So in our, we offer the information freely to all users. And when you publish that information, do we just want you to give us the credit for it? But we are not charging any fees uh, for that uh, report or that information. We just want the credits, and that's it. Right. Thank you very much for, for bringing those questions and also for uh, to Gabriela and Samantha for um, yeah, for staying with us, for sharing your experiences and your expertise around this topic. I can see that there's a whole lot more questions. I know from my experience in the room that I was in, I think we're slightly running out of time to go into more questions, but we have captured those questions. And normally in our follow-up email, we will try to answer as many as possible. And uh, we will also be sharing the um, uh, the presentation from from Gabriela and also the recording from from today's peer forum. Um, so yeah, so thank you. A big round of applause to Gabriela and to Samantha for for joining us today. Um, and I think we're coming slowly to the end of today's peer forum and the series. Um, however, before we kind of close off, um, I know that. There's, uh, there might be interest in a, in a phase two of uh, the STARS project. And so we wanted to just uh, gather participants and states' interest and appetite. And so we've got a little poll prepared that I'm launching just now. So you should see a poll coming up. And the question there is, would your state be interested in taking part in a second phase of the STARS project? Um, and, you know, it might be, yes, this is great. My department definitely wants to get involved or you might need to share this uh, with your organization or with your department first, or you might need a bit more information on the project first. Um, or maybe your department doesn't have the capacity or isn't quite ready to, you know, participate. Um, or you might not be interested at all in the project. So feel free to select one or multiple. Um, It'd be great to see. Great. I can see them coming in. I'll share them in a minute. Hope you've clicked all of them. If you cannot see the um the poll, you can also write your response into um into the chat. Great. Okay, so I can see that I'm going to end the poll and share some of the information here. Um so we can see that, yes, uh, there's actually quite a few of you 
who've said this is great and that your department wants to get involved. Some of you might need a little bit more information or maybe talk to um, others within your organization and your, and, and your department. So um, we'll be in touch um, about this. And I think with that, I wanted to hand over uh, for some closing words to my colleague, Jebby Rahman. Jebby, can I invite you in? Thank you so much, Julianne, and thank you everyone for joining the session today. Um, unfortunately, um, Farial has some audio issues, um, but yeah, very privileged to kind of come here and provide closing remarks to this um, session. Um, it's, it's really been great to kind of follow um, all the questions and yeah, all this information. Um, I started on, on leading the Climate Footprint Project when I joined here uh, four years ago, so it's wonderful to sort of see Samantha again and all the work that you've done in Pernambuco on your inventory and now with the satellite data. And thanks also to Gabriella today for joining us. Um, it's, it's been really wonderful to work with you and Leka uh, from the Climate Tree team. Um, so yeah, just, just a huge thank you for everyone uh, for taking part. This is the final uh, peer forum uh, for the series and the Climate Footprint Project is coming to an end this month. Uh, we do have some knowledge products, so please do look out for them. Um, and definitely what we've kind of learned in speaking to many of you is that you've really greatly valued these peer learning sort of sessions, uh, learning and sharing with one another your experiences. So we'll definitely kind of keep you posted on either next phases of the Climate Footprint Project or the SARS project or other upcoming projects that the Climate Group and Under2 Coalition might have. And definitely welcome you to join us again um, on, on these peer forum sessions. And do, do also share with us uh, areas that you're interested in working with. Uh, we're always interested in learning. But yeah, really a huge thank you to you all and a huge thanks to you, Julianne, and the EdgeFX team for supporting us through this journey. It's, it's been wonderful. Thanks so much. Great. Thank you very much, Debbie. So, yeah, uh, I can just reiterate also thank you from my side for um, coming, coming here, joining us, coming back. And I think now comes one of my favorite parts always, uh, which is when I ask you all to please switch on your videos, come off mute, um, to say a final goodbye to one another in whatever language comes to you. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Yes. Bye. Hasta la próxima. Bye. Chao. Chao. Hasta pronto. Nice to see you. Bye. Bye. Gracias. Fantastic. Great. Thank you, everybody. That's the end of the peer forum. So feel free to. Gracias. Hello a todos. Gracias. Chao. Fantastic. Thank you. Feel free to leave the um, this room. Otherwise, we'll be um, slowly closing down the room as well. Ciao, Samantha. Bye, Gabriela. Perfect. Okay. It's start to. Bye. <laughs> Thank you, Daphne. Bye. Great. I just can't. There's a couple of people. Don't report.